Good evening. I'm Dr. Robert Peppercorn, and this is the Medical Explorer. As a specialist in skin diseases and allergies and as host of this program, I'll take you on an exploration of the medical communities of our Northern California counties and bring you behind the scenes of medical care practices right here in our local areas. Tonight, the Medical Explorer will take you behind the scenes of a major new diagnostic center in Yuba City. Tonight, you will see an actual new computerized device that can painlessly look inside the human body without needles or x-rays. We will have a chance to meet a new resident of our community as she experiences an actual MR scan. Have you ever thought about having a test done that can show details of the brain, joints, and other organs of your body, but you were concerned about x-rays or needles or knives? Well, the MR scan may be just the test that you're looking for. In the pharmacy corner tonight, our award-winning neighborhood pharmacist will tell us about the importance of flu shots. Are influenza vaccines a must for everyone? We'll learn the answer to this question and others about flu shots in the pharmacy corner tonight. Tonight's program will be extremely timely and very informative, and I hope that you'll stay with us for the next half hour. It's now time for us to visit our pharmacy corner as we learn the latest up-to-date information on the worlds of drugs and medications from one of our area's most respected neighborhood pharmacists. Returning tonight in our pharmacy corner is award-winning pharmacist Bob Church from the Medicine Shop Pharmacy in Marysville. Bob, welcome back to the Medical Explorer. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Pleasure. Every year, patients ask me about influenza vaccines and whether they need flu shots. How serious is influenza in the United States? Well, I suppose if you ask the, uh, the general public about flu, they would simply think it's more of a, a minor inconvenience, something you put up with every year for a few days when you get ill. Actually, however, it's uh, much more major than that. It's probably one, or it is, one of the ten leading causes of death, the complications of, mm. of influenza in this country. And over the past 20 years, there's been about 500,000 people that have died because of complications of the flu. What do you mean by complications of the flu? What does that mean? People who, who would get the flu and have, would have underlying, let's say, respiratory problems or uh, other disease states which would cause them to get very, very ill versus a person who is in good health who would have the normal aches and pains and vomiting, et cetera. Now, we know that about everybody around would like to avoid having the flu. I mean, nobody wants the flu. But uh, are there certain groups of people that would be benefited more by having flu shots? Definitely. Uh, people in the age group of 65 or older are, are the people who comprise 90% of those, of those deaths that we were talking about. So those are definitely the segment of the population that needs to have a flu shot. Um, children who would be on long-term aspirin therapy uh, because of the uh, fear of Rye syndrome would definitely want to be uh, vaccinated. Let's just review that a little bit because that's okay. sort of an interesting, you have to go through a few steps there. Right. You wanted, if they got a high fever and gave mm -hmm. them aspirin, that is considered possibly leading to that condition. If it's a viral infection, right. right. So <clears throat> viral infection plus fever plus aspirin may lead to Rye syndrome. That's correct. And so you're suggesting then give them a flu shot so they won't get the high fever. So they won't, and, you're right. And then they're already taking the aspirin. It won't hurt anything That's if correct. they don't get the flu. That's the idea. Okay, makes a That's lot of sense. That's the idea. Makes a lot of sense. Um, also people with um, cardiovascular problems, heart problems, uh, lung problems, respiratory problems, uh, diabetes, those are people who are candidates for the flu shot. But if I was a healthy, uh, 35, 38, 40 year old person and I wanted a flu shot because I knew that I would be around a lot of people like a teacher or you as a pharmacist and Absolutely. you wanted to prevent getting it, you certainly could do that as oh, well. Oh sure, and people who work in convalescent hospital settings and, and the residents of those settings are obviously candidates because once the flu gets going in a convalescent hospital, it can go through the whole hospital like that. So. Right, oh, epidemic almost. Yeah. Right? yeah. Is there anyone that should not be getting a flu shot? Uh, I think people who, sh who should not would be, let's say, somebody who had a definite allergy to eggs. 
because these vaccines are prepared from the embryonic fluid of chicken eggs. So if somebody was to indicate that they were allergic to egg products, then the wise thing to do would be to do a skin test or a little under the skin uh, injection of a, a small amount, well diluted uh, vaccine to see if they're going to be allergic to that product before you give it. And there really aren't that many people truly no. allergic to eggs. Uh, no, and then I, and I think also way. people who had uh, who have an active uh, uh, respiratory uh, infection or some other active infection should probably wait to have their flu shot until they're over that. Well, I had my flu shot very recently, and I know before you leave today, our nurse is ready with a syringe, and you're going to get your <laughs> yeah, flu shot. Yeah, I'm going to get mine. So uh, I, we really believe in flu shots, and Bob, as usual, that was very, very useful information and extremely important. And I hope our viewers will discuss their concerns about flu and influenza vaccines with their doctors and pharmacists very soon. We look forward to you returning to the Pharmacy Corner on future programs, Bob. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, on with the Medical Explorer. Recently, I've been delighted to observe the completion of one of the most modern medical offices to ever be constructed in Yuba City. That's our news for tonight. Sutter Butte's Imaging, founded by a group of local radiologists, has brought MR imaging to the Yuba City Marysville area. The MR magnetic resonance imager can take pictures of organs inside the human body and present, present the report to your doctor in less than an hour in emergency situations. Let's leave my Skin and Allergy Medical Group studios now and walk half a block down Shasta Street near Fremont Hospital in Yuba City as we explore the MR Imager. <laughs> It's a pleasure to be with you again here on the Medical Explorer. Thank you. Welcome to Sort of Use Imaging. It's really a fantastic facility. You know, I remember back around 1986, 87, I built my office a half a block down the street, and I thought it was always going to be the nicest building around, but your group here at uh, Sutter Butte's Imaging and Bi-County Radiology have really outdone me. This is a fantastic project, and I'm really looking forward to showing our viewers of this area and down in Stockton as well what you've done here. Okay. We're ready to go. <laughs> I guess my first question is, Tell me what you have here in this beautiful building. Uh, we have about 8,500 square feet here. At the, at the present time, we have our, our high strength uh, magnet, and we have uh, two mammography rooms uh, in our business office. Our viewers on previous shows have seen you with this type of machine. Uh, I know the one you have here is much more efficient and more powerful when you had that truck across the street in the parking lot with the MR scanner. But I'm not sure they remember the differences between CAT scans and MR scans. We know that the CAT scan uses x-rays, uses computers to take these images and put them into a very detailed picture. The CAT scan, you know, also not being invasive, not using needles uh, very often, no cutting. What, what's the difference between a CAT scan which uses x-rays and an MR scan? What is the MR scan doing? Uh, the physics are fairly complex, but uh, basically uh, the magnetic resonance uh, imager uh, uses uh, magnetic waves and also radio frequency signals. The actual image is, is uh, produced uh, by uh, a radio signal. You can actually see, though, uh, not just bones. You can look at other things in the body, too. Uh, the magnet is uh, exquisite as showing soft tissues in the body, much more so than the CAT scanner. Uh, the CAT scanner will actually show uh, uh, bony structures a little better. When you say soft tissues, that could mean uh, muscles or, or what other things are soft tissue? Well, the, the, the soft tissues within the brain and the soft tissues within the joints and muscles, yes. So you actually get more definition looking at brain tissue. Uh, you can see more of that structure. And what if, what if I came in and I was a football player and injured my knee and my doctor thought I had a ligament injury and said, well, the only way we can find out about that is to open up your knee and look. And, and we said, but well, I heard that the MR scan can look at soft tissues. Can you do things with knees? Uh, knee is one of our uh, more common procedures, in fact. And uh, uh, we can see uh, meniscal tears and uh, ligament tears and fluid within the uh, joint space. And we can even uh, see a fair amount of detail of the bone itself. Uh, is, does the patient feel any discomfort when they're in the machine? No, the patient just lays there and uh, you don't notice or feel anything. How long is an average test when the patient's in? 
I would say about uh, half hour to 45 minutes. Now, if, it's, if someone feels that they wanted to have this very detailed test, uh, could they ask their doctor about that and they would be the ones that the doctor would order the test? Right. Uh, we only uh, do studies that are referred to us uh, by other doctors. So uh, examples, tell me some of the complaints that patients may complain to their doctor about. Would perhaps um, headaches as a problem or sinus problems or neck problems, all these things possibly be evaluated this way? Uh, yes, uh, the most common usage for our, for our magnet is uh, head studies uh, for a variety of problems. Uh, headaches would be one of them. Uh, spine studies, uh, cervical spine, lumbar spine, primarily to rule out disc disease, disc hernias. Uh, many of the joints of the bodies, we mentioned the knees, also the hips and the shoulders. If someone were to be uh, having all kinds of back trouble and they'd been to their doctor and there was a concern about osteoporosis where the bone is losing its minerals. Would that show up on this test? Uh, no, it's not used for that at the present time. I see. But if they thought they may have broken their back, would that show up? Or would a broken vertebrae show up on this? A broken vertebrae would show up on this. Uh, it would also show up fairly easily on an x-ray or a CAT scan. Okay, so there are a lot of tests that overlap, I see. Yes. Well, what I heard you had set up today, in fact, uh, I sent my wife over because I wanted her to be checked out for these sinus headaches she was having. So you have a technician, and uh, we're going to bring my wife Judy in, and you're going to actually do a, an MR scan on her today. Right. Who do you have to uh, show us the machine today? Uh, our main head technologist is Dennis Lord. Dennis, thank you for being on the Medical Explorer today. Come on over here, and we'll uh, sort of get set up. And uh, Judy, why don't you come in? can stand next to him. You had complained about a, a headache for quite a while. I think you were saying it was front of your head and going around to the back of your head. That's correct. And uh, we decided, oh, I guess I decided, I didn't want to expose you to any x-rays. I just decided it would be best to do a test that was non-invasive, painless, and uh, n no, no danger. So I wanted you to come over here and get this MR scan. What I would like our viewers to see, though, is what an average patient would go through before they go in for the test. So could you discuss with her what you have to usually do? Uh, certainly. Uh, Judy, basically uh, a few questions. I would just want to make sure that you don't have a pacemaker. I don't. Good. The uh, pacemakers can be affected by the magnetic field. The uh, radio frequency waves can reprogram the, the uh, rate that it uh, pulses. Uh, also, uh, have you had any brain surgery? None. Okay. Uh, inner ear surgery? No. And no heart surgery of any type, right? That's correct. Okay, it looks like it's safe to do the scan with no problems. Uh, basically, we want to make sure that you have all credit cards and things uh, in the locker because the uh, magnet can erase your credit cards and stop your wristwatch. Uh, all metal removed from, uh, that's especially loose in pockets. And then uh, we can go inside and do the scan, basically. We're going to ask you to lie very still for uh, about 45 minutes. We're going to be doing the test in 10 and 12 minute increments. There'll be a chance to reach up and scratch your nose or whatever during the, the scan uh, in between the, the different segments. Uh, it makes kind of a loud tapping noise, but there's no discomfort. Uh, we'll have a set of headphones with music on it. It'll help alleviate some of the tapping sound, and we can also communicate with you through the, through the earphones. So no questions? What would happen if she had her purse and credit cards with her and went in that room? Would they just immediately be wiped out? Yes. Uh, as soon as you get past that door, maybe a foot or so, it, what it does is erases a magnetic strip on the back of the credit card and it uh, no longer has the, the coded numbers. So if they would, you should go into a store and they'd run it through the machine, there'd just be nothing there? Correct. It would not register anything. What if she had uh, a lot of jewelry on that was, uh, you know, had metals that were exposed? What would that do? It can actually pull on it. For example, earrings. I've had patients go in with earrings before, and, and it tugged their ear like this. And uh, if something loose and that's fairly large, for example, like a pocket knife, can be can actually come out of your pocket and go into the magnet. I remember we did a demonstration uh, when we were with uh, Dr. Van Kirk last time. We had this. Uh, chain, a, a dog leash mm -hmm. chain, and we held it up and it raised it right off the ground into That's the right. magnetic field. It was fascinating. That's right. It's a very powerful magnetic field. It can uh, uh, actually pick up an oxygen bottle if we got it close to the magnet and, and fling it through the air into the center of the magnetic field. So we have to be very careful, especially uh, uh, ferromagnetic objects of any weight.